we begin with part A where we have to put 3 cm cubic centimeters of lamp water in the in the tube. So we prepare that uh, amount of lamp water first, put it in the rack, then we get ready to heat salt X, which is this green solid green powder. So we remove the stopper, close air hole like the bunch of banana. We will heat the tube gently. We we'll always start heating gently. Uh, close the air hole, heat gently, and then open the air hole to heat strongly. Always put the tube at the tip of the small blue triangle. So we should always note, uh, pay attention to all uh, to all the changes happening in the tube. So we see that the green solid is turning black, and then at the same time. We want to withdraw a sample of gas from within the boiling tube and then pass it through the lamp water. So you see that I squeeze the dropper a few times to ensure that I don't transfer any lamp water into the boiling tube because we understand that we will need the contents of this boiling tube for the later part of the experiment. So you want to pass it through the lamp water and then we see the white precipitate forming in the lamp water. We could continue to draw a uh, a few more samples of the gas just to confirm that uh, high precipitate is formed in the lung water. So that's why precipitate, a positive test for the lung water, a positive test for carbon dioxide. So we see that the green solid has turned black. Because we know that we will need to use this, the contents of this tube for the next part of the experiment, so we need to ensure that the decomposition of this blue uh, of this green salt is complete. So I would, which is why <coughs> I continue to heat the green solid for a while more, just to make sure the decomposition is complete, and that my results that I get later will be quite good. So we're not using the flame, always close air hole, so luminous flame. Then you have. Uh, a second sample of X now, this time in the test tube. We need to soak the end of a wooden splint with a Diana's water. This is the flame test, so you always soak the end of a wooden splint with Diana's water and then coat the splint with as much of the salt as you can. Just coat as much as you can. And then to carry out the flame test correctly, always open air hole to get a non luminous flame, the blue flame, and put the splint at the top of the small blue triangle again, okay, the hottest part of the flame. Right? So you put it in for about one, two seconds, and then you will see the color there. So in this case, we get a green flame. It's. Okay, you can repeat a few times just to confirm otherwise uh, we will go on to well, in this case we'll go on to part C so cl open, close air hole to get a big flame safety flame then we go on to part C where we have acid Y where we will add the acid Y to the boiling tube that we have from part A so we see that a blue solution is formed Black solid dissolves to form a blue solution. We have to mix and then pour it, pour the contents into the beaker. Next, we need to gently heat the beaker until no further change is seen. So you will get ready your drop of ten wire boss, and then leave the beaker of blue solution to heat. Now this was blue solution, the instruction tells us that the liquid in this beaker now is called solution Z. The fact that it's called solution tells us that we are not expecting to see any solid inside. The solution is formed when the solute when the solute completely dissolves in the solvent. So now we have a blue solution. No solid particles left inside. We're not supposed to allow the liquid to boil. So we just heat it for a while and then carefully remove it from the stand. 
and we will continue with the experiment. So the answer burner and the retort stand, you could uh, organize your bench, make sure that you have enough space so that you can carry out the experiments correctly and safely. We will proceed with part D where we take 2 cubic centimeters of solution Z and no solution, put it in a clean test tube. Next, we will add 3 pieces of magnesium ribbon. We understand that magnesium ribbon is a reactive metal, reactive enough to react with cold water. So, we would expect bubbles. And so what I'm doing, I'm covering the mouth of the test tube with my thumb because I am trying to collect as much gas as I can. At the same time, we pay attention to the changes in the tube. We see brown solid appearing on the magnesium ribbon. We will always stick to colors and so it's a brown solid. Uh, I just did a burning spleen, lighter spleen test to test for the presence of hydrogen to confirm my prediction. So it's true that magnesium does react with the water in the blue solution. And we are supposed to leave the tube to stand and observe it, so we'll come back to it later. Meanwhile, we go on to part E. 1 cubic centimeters of solution Z in the test tube, followed by 1 cubic centimeters of nitric acid. And then 1 cubic centimeters of barium nitrate. We understand barium nitrate is the test for sulfate, so we are on the lookout for white PDT. Now that we start with a solution that is blue to begin with, so we would observe a white PPT in the blue solution. We will come back to that later as well. So going on to part F, 1 cubic centimeter of Z in a clean test tube. Then we will add aqueous ammonia. This is the classic uh, cation test. We get, we are supposed to add a few drops, like now. And then we are supposed to observe any PPT. Yes, we do get a light blue PPT. And we are... We understand that we always would have to add in excess. Excess would be at least half or three quarters of the test tube. What we want to see is if the PPT would dissolve in excess because of it. So that's about three quarters of that test tube. They're about excess. You do see the PPT now at the bottom of the tube. We would always have to shake to mix. If you have a stopper, you could. Otherwise, you could do what I'm doing just to ensure that the PPT is evenly uh, mixed and then we have a dark blue solution so light blue PPT is soluble in excess to form dark blue solution is your answer for part F part G we need to take 2 cubic centimeters of solution Z now add one spatular load of solid sodium chloride so sodium chloride is quite solid sodium chloride we will take one spatula, then we will use a rubber band to shake the test tube thoroughly. So blue solution, upon adding, instantly you see a color change, always shake to mix, always, and you will find that your blue solution will begin to change color. The observation is blue solution turns green. So the color dissolves, blue solution turns green. That's your answer for part G. Then we add water until the test tube is over half full and we find that we see another color change. The green solution turns like blue. We've thought uh, the tube that we want to pay attention to, this is now part E. So that's the white PPT we expect upon adding barium nitrate. So that's white PPT in blue solution. And then this is from part D, the magnesium ribbon. So the change is that you will see the, you see the brown solid form and that the blue solution